This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we're going to show you the process for building a four-bow bimini frame. Before we can build a bimini top, we need a frame to pattern from, and obviously to hold the bimini top up. In this video, we'll walk you through the process of building that frame. After building this four-bow bimini frame, we'll show you how to make the bimini top in another video. In order to get started, we need a bimini frame kit. You can get that at Sailrite. You can pick your bimini frame kit and your bimini skin kit at Sailrite. A frame kit is exactly what the name implies, a frame kit for your bimini. A bimini skin kit is the fabric and supplies to make the bimini top. The objective of this video is to build a four bow bimini frame. Here are some of the common terms that you can expect to find throughout this video. Before we can build the four bow bimini frame, we need to know the desired width, spread, and nominal height. To get these measurements, you'll need to go to your boat and determine what works best for your bimini top. Decide where you want your bimini mounted on the port and starboard side and take a measurement from those two points. Then take a measurement for spread. This is the measurement from bow to stern, the front edge of the bimini to the rear edge of the bimini. And finally the height from the mounting position up. We'll be mounting our bimini frame on a wooden platform. Here are the measurements for the bimini that we'll be making. Yours may be completely different. For ease of construction, patterning, and building the bimini top, our bimini will be mounted on a wooden platform. But on the boat, make sure that the bimini location, height, and span provides the maximum coverage but does not interfere with the boom or other rigging. Building the wooden platform for it's easy. We're going to show you how to do that next. There are many advantages to building the bimini frame on a wooden platform. It's easy to move around, no standing on ladders or teetering off the edge of the boat when making a frame, and especially when it comes to patterning for the bimini top. Making this wooden platform is easy. We'll show you how to build one for your bimini. To build this wooden platform, we can use 2x4s. Those can be picked up at your local lumber yard. Having the spread and knowing where the port and starboard mounting positions are, you can come up with a materials list for the lumber that's required to build this wooden platform. We recommend building it slightly oversized. We find that using grip fast connector plates on the top side and the bottom side are perfect for joining the lumber together at each of the corners and also the cross beam along the width. These grip fast connector plates can be purchased at a hardware store. Because this is a four bow bimini and rather large, we definitely recommend installing these plates on both the top side and the bottom side. Once they're installed on the bottom side of our wooden frame, we will install carpet at the corners and also at the cross beam. This will make it easier to move our platform around as we build the frame and pattern from it. The cross beam is located in the center of our frame and we know the width of our bimini is 90 inches from mounting position to mounting position. So here we've labeled on the board where each one of the universal deck hinges needs to be mounted. We'll use the number 10 pan head stainless steel one and a quarter inch screws to secure each one of these at that location. If we were mounting these universal deck hinges directly to the boat through fiberglass, you would want to bed them appropriately so that we can prevent leakage of water into the fiberglass. In the next chapter, we show the proper process of bedding hardware. Strap eyes are installed at the four corners. They should be in line with the universal deck hinge. The stainless steel screws that are used to secure the strap eyes are included in the bimini frame kits. Now our wooden platform is ready and all of the hardware that's required to build the frame is mounted to it. Next we need to work with the frames, but before we do that we want to touch on how to properly bed this hardware if you're mounting it on your boat, which you will have to do after building the bimini. Here we're going to demonstrate installing the universal deck hinge. This will be the location for a future dodger on our boat. Once you've determined the location of the fitting, use an awl or a punch and make a recess so your drill bit will not wander when you start to drill through the fiberglass. 
To install the universal deck hinge, we'll use stainless steel Phillips oval head tapping screws, number 10 size. For these screws, we recommend a 5 32nd inch bit. Since we're using self-tapping screws, we only want to go the depth of the screw mounted in the hardware. So here we'll measure its depth and then place tape on the drill bit so we go almost exactly the same depth as the screw will go in the fiberglass. That way we won't go through the other side of the fiberglass. Because the awl made a little recess, we can drill this without the bit moving when we drill through the fiberglass. The depth of the hole must accommodate the entire length of the screw that will protrude from the bottom of the hardware. We recommend that you countersink the hole. Here we're using a countersink bit to do so. If you don't do this, you may have problems down the road with stress cracks coming from the screw's area. Another advantage of the countersunk hole is that our butyl tape that we'll be using for a bedding compound will be compressed into that cavity and it'll make a beautiful watertight bedding compound for our fixture. We've removed a small section of butyl tape from the roll and we'll now take it and form it or press it onto the post of the screw. It will compress nicely when the fitting comes up against the deck. Any hardware that needs to be mounted to the fiberglass deck should be bedded in such a way, including the strap eyes or other hardware. If you are through bolting, follow the same procedure. Now, as we screw this fastener or universal deck hinge onto our fiberglass, you'll notice that the butyl tape squeezes out from underneath our fastener. That means it's also filling up that cavity that we created over the hole, thus making this a very watertight application. Butyl tape is also very easy to clean up. Here we'll take some excess butyl tape and wad it up and then just simply use it to dab up the squeezed out portion of the butyl tape around our fastener. Bimini frame kits come with the universal deck hinges. If you want to change what comes in the kit, be sure to give us a call. We're glad to change any components that come with any of the Bimini frames or Bimini kits. We've mounted the deck mount on our wooden platform. If you're not using that, you would have yours mounted to the boat. This hardware, including the strap eyes, will be removed later on and used on the boat. Drawing the scale rendition is next. To cut our frame pieces to size, we need to draw a scale rendition of the side of our bimini frame. The bows include a crown, so measuring from the center line will result in a different measurement than measuring at the sides of the bimini. So we need to take that into account when making our scale rendition. Here's our completed bimini, and measuring at the side we get a measurement of about 49 inches. But if we measure that bow at the center line, we get a measurement of 52 inches, a difference of about 3 inches. So when we draw our scale rendition for the height measurement, we need to take the measurement at the side of the bimini, which is 3 inches shorter than the measurement taken from the middle position. Measuring the finished bimini at the center location for the span measurement, we get about 96 inches. This measurement includes the curved crown of the horizontal piece on both sides, the primary and secondary bow, so it adds about 6 inches. As you can see here, when we take the measurement from the side or the skirt, we get about 90 inches, a difference of 6 inches. Since our scale renditions from the side, we'll subtract 6 inches from the spread measurement if we took it from the center position. We also want to touch on the fact that cutting down the frame size may change a few variables. For example, if we reduce the nominal height while still maintaining typical spread of 98 inches, the angle of degree to the waterline is reduced slightly. The frame fittings will add about 2 inches, and the crown will add about 3 inches. We will discuss more about that when we do the scale rendition. If you've taken your spread and height measurements from the center line of the bimini, then you need to subtract 6 inches from the spread measurement and 3 inches from the height measurement, because our scale rendition will be taken from the side of the bimini, not the middle section or the center line. 
Coming up next, we'll make a scale rendition of the bimini frame so we know the appropriate length to cut our tubing. For the scale rendition, we're going to use grid paper. Here we're writing down the measurements for our bimini top. The second grid paper will be used as a ruler. So along its folded edge, we will count the squares and label them. Our max spread at the center is 98 inches for us. However, at the side, we subtract 6 inches, so our spread is 92 inches. Each square on our grid sheet represents 4 inches. 92 inches divided by 4 equals 23 squares, and that's what we've marked along the bottom edge. Then we'll strike a line from those marks. Using our straight edge, we'll then strike a line going up from the sides of that measurement. The height doesn't really matter for these two lines. At the line at the bottom, we need to find the center. 23 squares divided by 2 is 11.5 squares. Then for the four bow, measure over 4 inches, which is 1 square from that. That's always to the right. Our desired height at the center is 51 inches. At the side, it's 3 inches less, so 48 inches. 48 divided by 4 equals 12 squares. So from the bottom line, measure up 12 squares and strike a line there. Using the straight edge, draw a line now from the left-hand corner over to the 4-inch mark near the center location, the 4-inch mark that's to the right of the center location, and strike a line. Our hardware, INs and jaw slides and universal deck hinges will take up about two inches on each leg at the bottom, so we measure up a half a square there. And the secondary bow is typically placed about three inches up from that mark. So at that mark we just struck on the primary bow, we will strike a line to the top right corner. Using a calculator, we will separate the space at the top by 3, since this is a 4 bow bimini. So 23 squares divided by 3 equals 7.66 squares for us. Your measurements may be completely different. So 7.66 mark 1, 7.66 mark 2, and the last one should be 7.66, which it is. Using an object with a 90 degree edge, like this ruler, we will place it on the primary bow so it's in line with it, and so it lines up with that mark we made at the top, the first mark. Then we'll go to the secondary bow and use a 90 degree object, again like the ruler, and place it along the secondary bow with the second mark, and strike a line there as well. Remember that hardware including eye ends and jaw slides, will take up about two inches at the base of all legs. So we'll measure up a half a square on the intermediate bows. Those are the two short ones we just drew. And also on the secondary bow. A half square equals two inches. Now we can measure each of those bows. This is the primary bow, and we want to measure to the two inch location. So 16.9 squares for it, and for the secondary bow, it is 15.2, and then for the intermediate bows, they are 5 squares. Using a calculator, now we multiply those squares by 4, and we get our inches for each of the bows. This scale rendition is probably one of the best ways to determine how long to cut each bow, but it doesn't mean it'll be perfectly accurate. It may still be off by an inch or so, and that's often expected. Sailrite Bimini frame kits come with a hockey stick leg section and also a crowned horizontal section. At the end of each hockey stick section, there is a spline inserted. That's what will be used to join the crown section to each of the hockey stick legs. To determine the length of each leg, measure from the end up to the curved section of each hockey stick leg. Here we're using a yardstick to determine where that curve is. The primary and secondary leg will measure about 71 inches in length. Using the scale rendition we just made, we can see we need to cut the primary leg to 68 inches in length. To cut the hockey stick legs to size, here are the equations you will need. The primary and secondary leg lengths maximum are 71 inches. 
Subtract your desired leg height from that, and that's the cutoff length. For the intermediate bows, they are 63 inches. Subtract your desired leg height, and that's the cutoff for those. Using masking tape, he marks the bottom of the leg so he can mark it at 3 inches. 71 inches minus 3 inches equals 68 inches. This primary bow will consist of two hockey stick sections on the port side and starboard side and one crowned horizontal section. So here he's marking the second hockey stick leg at 3 inches. Your measurements may be completely different. Here we're using a clamp and some carpet to clamp it to the tabletop. Then we can use a hacksaw and cut it to length. To cut the stainless steel tubing, we recommend using a hacksaw with a blade that has 24 teeth per inch. We're cutting one inch stainless steel, and we are going to show you the entire process to show you how long it typically takes to cut stainless steel tubing. This blade is actually not new. A newer blade would even be faster than what we're showing here. But as you can see, it only takes a few seconds. To cut down on confusion, label each of the legs. These are two primary legs, so they're labeled primary. Now we'll cut the two hockey stick legs for the secondary bows. The length of the secondary bow sent from Sayerite is about 71 inches. To determine the amount to cut off, simply subtract the amount from your scaled rendition from 71 inches. And that is the amount that needs to be cut off from the ends of the two hockey stick sections. After labeling them, we'll cut them to size. The intermediate bows sent with the kit are 63 inches in length. Now we're going to cut off a lot of excess, so don't let that alarm you. There will be a lot of waste here, because our bows are basically going to be 20 inches in length when we're done. The 4 bow bimini frame kit has a max width of 106 inches. Subtract the desired width, and that is the cutoff length. However, you need to divide that by 2 because we have to cut off each end of the horizontal crown section to keep the crown centered. We desire the width of our bimini frame to be 90 inches. That's from starboard to port mounting position. So on the four horizontal crowned pieces, we're going to cut 8 inches off of each end. This will result in a horizontal piece that is actually less than your desired uh, width measurement but that takes into account the hockey stick legs, so don't let that alarm you. Now all our tubing is cut to size, and we're ready to assemble it into a four bow bimini frame. Our tubing is cut to size, we're ready for assembly. Of the hockey stick sections, there are two each of primary section, two each of secondary section, and four each of intermediate sections and each pair is joined with one crowned horizontal piece. The spline on the hockey stick section is inserted into the crowned horizontal piece. Be sure that all tubing is laying nice and flat on a flat surface like this floor. With everything laying flat, Bill's going to use some tape here and tape the two sections together along the tubing's length and also around the circumference at the joint. We need to insert a rivet to hold the crown section to the hockey stick section. And to do that, we need to drill a hole. We will use a spring punch tool, which marks our tubing with a dimple, creating a starting point that prevents our drill from wandering. This dimple is placed about two inches away from our joint. Using an eighth inch drill bit, we will drill through the outer tubing and into the spline. We've also lubricated the uh, drill bit with uh, cutting oil to prolong its life. We'll drill through the outer tubing and the spline underneath it, and we will not drill through the opposite side. We now need to enlarge that drill bit hole, and here we're going to use a number 11 drill bit. A 1364 inch drill bit also works for this. We'll lubricate the drill bit and now enlarge that hole. The tape can now be removed and now we'll insert a stainless steel rivet. This will lock those two assemblies together. Bill has a little bit of difficulty pushing the head of the rivet down flat against the tubing 
his hole probably could have been reamed out a little bit more, but he does accomplish it. This stainless steel rivet is very difficult to set into the tubing. It has a stainless steel mandrel and it takes several compressions and a lot of force to finally set it into the tubing. As you can see here in the video, we did not cut anything from this shot. And do wear safety goggles because the mandrel does sometimes fly up and hit you in the face. Here we're setting the other side. You'll notice there's a rivet already in the hockey stick section, and that rivet holds the spline in place. It was inserted and installed by Sayorite when you received the tubing. Continue this process for all four of your bows. If you do not have a spring-loaded punch, and if you opted to buy the drill steady tubing tool from Sayorite, this process is done a little bit differently. Using a permanent marker, while the tubing was laying on the flat, Bill marks from tubing to tubing so he knows exactly when the tubing is lined up appropriately. Because this tool raises the tubing off the floor, it is no longer flat. So once he has that tool in place, he has to shim other portions of the tubing to be sure that his lines that he struck at the joint are matched up directly across from each other. Once they are, he will insert an eighth inch drill bit with some lubrication into the drill steady tubing tool and drill through the tubing just as he did prior. Now the drill steady tubing tool can be removed and the number 11 drill bit can be used to enlarge that hole. Then a stainless steel rivet that's provided with the Bimini frame kits can be inserted into the hole joining those sections together just like we did earlier. Again, be sure to wear safety goggles. In previous Bimini videos we marked a permanent marker line along the edge of the tubing and then we placed the 3M strapping tape on top of that. Here we've decided to place the 3M strapping tape along the edge of the tubing on the outer edge and about 20 inches past the curve. Now we'll use a permanent marker that's inserted in some of the scrap tubing and place a line along that edge. Notice here we've used some tape so that we can center that marker in this scrap piece of tubing and this will make it easy to mark the center location of the tubing as it lays flat on the floor. We will follow this procedure for all four of our tubing bows. Here we are marking the intermediate bow. All of our tubing is assembled. We're now ready to mount the primary and secondary bow to our wooden platform. We like to place the tubing on top of our wooden frame so that the rivet is facing up. This is the primary bow. The secondary bow, we do the same. Onto the primary bow, we will install a jaw slide with an eye end. In fact, we'll install two of them. So we'll remove the tape that indicates what bow this is and slide those jaw slides and eye ends onto the primary bow. Then onto the end, a eye end is inserted over it. Then we will insert the eye end into the universal deck hinge. And now lock the set screw of the eye end down onto the tubing. That same procedure is followed on the opposite side. The eye end over here has already been installed in our universal deck hinge. Typically you'll experience a little bit of pressure as you often have to pull the tubing over to the universal deck hinge and insert it in the eye end. The receiver for the eye end of the universal deck hinge should be in a vertical position. Once it is, then you can lock all the set screws on the eye end. Now we'll work on the secondary bow, and to it we need to install a jaw slide with an eye end attached to it. We'll do that to both legs. Insert the end of the secondary bow into the last eye end that's attached to the primary bow, as seen here. Cinch down the set screw of the eye end, but do not tighten it completely. 
then move to the other side and repeat that process. Bill is doing all of this on his own. A second helper would definitely uh, be advantageous as you can work from both sides, starboard and port, at the same time. Be sure the tubing is resting all the way at the bottom of the eye end before you tighten the set screw. Set screws should be tightened once you're assured that the jaw slide is resting in a vertical position up and all the tubing is laying as flat as possible on the opposite side of your frame assembly. Then tighten down all the set screws. So make sure everything is vertical. As you can see, this one is not. So we'll release the set screw and twist it so it's vertical. We have not tightened down the set screw on the jaw slide. We'll do that later on. Coming up next, we'll mount the intermediate bows. There are two of them. In preparation for installing the intermediate bows, we will cinch down the jaw slide so that the eye ends are horizontal to the floor. Do not tighten down those set screws hard at this point. They are only there so they are out of the way. Then we'll flip back the secondary bow on top of the primary bow and position it on top of it so that the horizontal crowns are almost directly on top of each other. Using strapping tape, we will tape them both together so they do not move. We'll do that on port and starboard. Now we can go over to the jaw slide of the secondary bow and cinch it on to the primary bow because it's directly on top of it and the horizontal crowns are laying directly over each other. Do that to both sides. This should position the secondary bow about three inches above the hardware for the primary bow. Then you can release the strapping tape and reposition the secondary bow on the opposite side. In preparation for installation of the intermediate bow, we will lay it on top of the secondary bow with the rivet facing up, as you can see here. Then we'll move the jaw slide with the eye end attached up to that intermediate bow and insert it. Having a second helper would be helpful on the opposite side to do this all at the same time. Do not cinch down the set screws yet until everything is inserted and the tubing is all the way at the bottom of the eye ends. Then ensure that everything is vertical and also ensure that the intermediate bow is on top of the secondary bow so that its crowned surfaces are almost flush with each other. Do this both for the starboard and port sides of that intermediate bow on top of the secondary bow. We'll then go and do the same procedure for the intermediate bow on the primary bow. We will not show this process. Next, we'll strap the frame in place using the 3M strapping tape. In order to strap up the frame, we need to move the intermediate bows so that they are pointing towards the middle of our frame section. Then at the center location, use some strapping tape and wrap it around the primary bow. Here, a second helper would be helpful yet again, but Bill does everything on his own. He grabs the secondary bow, lifts it up, and he will I'm gonna help you. slowly oh, drop the primary yeah. bow. And in preparation for finding the spread measurement, for us at the center location, it's 98 inches, he will temporarily tape Just it in it place until he believes it is about the appropriate spread. Then he will do some measuring to confirm it. And as you can see here, we're a little bit short. So he will have to release the strapping tape and give it a few inches more to achieve his 98 inch measurement. For your information, when the bimini top is installed, it will usually reduce this span measurement by about two inches. This is due to the fact that fabric shrinks up a little as it is sewn. And we also want a very tight bimini top. Strapping tape is then attached next to that strapping tape we did at the middle position and it is run down to our uh, wooden platform. If yours is mounted to the boat you would have to run it down to something that you can attach it to just to temporarily hold the frame so that the top is almost horizontal. Because he doesn't know what the horizontal position is this is just a temporary fix for now. All four of the bows need to have the center position labeled. So here from spline to spline, 
he measures the distance, and then he divides it by two to find the center location of the bow. We need to do this for all four bows. To strap the bimini frame in place, we're going to use a yardstick along the top of this, the secondary bow, and measure down from that about 12 inches. We'll place a little mark there at 12 inches. We'll do this also to the primary bow as well, because strapping tape needs to run from the leg of the primary and the secondary bow down to our strap eye that we installed on the wooden base. Bimini frame kits do not come with the stainless okay. steel snap hooks, but the Bimini skin kits do. So we've taken the snap hooks out of the skin kit and we'll use our strapping tape and run it through the snap hook just as seen here. Then we'll attach that to the strap eye. We'll go up to that 12 inch mark that we placed on the tubing and wrap the tape at that mark on the tubing. Cut the strapping tape so that you leave a tail of about two foot. Follow this same procedure for all four corners. Do not strap them down securely yet as adjustments will likely be required. At the center position of the bow, we are going to measure down to the floor and find the height measurement. We want the secondary bow and the primary bow to be an equal distance from the floor so that the top is level. Here at the primary bow, we're a little high, so we need to release the strapping tapes on the side and allow it to come back towards the primary side bow. We'll utilize that strapping tape at the center position to find equal heights on both sides of the bimini. In fact, we're going to install another strapping tape from the wooden platform up on the primary side to accomplish this task as well. This is a temporary tape just to find the levelness of the bimini. Now at the center position, we have equal measurements on both sides, the forward and the aft portion. Now at each joint, we need to be assured that the uh, distance from the floor is the same on starboard and port sides. It is not here, so we need to make some adjustments with our strapping tape to the sides of the bimini so that we have an equal measurement at each one of the joints or splines where the hockey stick section joined the horizontal crown section. Now we'll remeasure. We are still off by a half inch or so, so we'll apply more pressure and readjust the strapping tape again. After making final adjustments, be sure to check both sides yet again. Once those measurements are the same on the starboard and port side, we can secure the strapping tape in a secure position here so it does not move on us. Do that on both starboard and port sides. It's not going to slip. We've done that for the primary bow, now we need to do it for the secondary bow, following the same procedure yet again. At each joint or spline, confirm the measurements, then strap it in place securely once they are the same on both the starboard and port side. Then before moving on, be sure you check middle positions, starboard and port side at the joint, on all sides. If anything is off, then readjust. If you're as close as a quarter inch or less, I would not make any modifications. You are close enough. Now we can remove the strapping tape at the center position on both the primary and secondary bow. Then it is paramount to reinforce the strapping tapes at the four corners, the strapping tape that goes down to the strap eye. So here, Bill is running another length of the 3M strapping tape alongside the first to basically reinforce that strap because there'll be a lot of pressure on the bimini and we do not want the strap to break or come loose. 
It's also not a bad idea when reinforcing the strapping tape to cover up the uh, glue on the opposite side of the strapping tape because when we come to patterning, if the glue is exposed, sometimes our Duraskrim pattern material will stick to it. This concludes the portion of building the four bow bimini frame. There are still some steps that need to be taken, but those will be shown in the second video when we start to show patterning. In the next chapter, we're going to show the materials list and the tools that were used to build this four bow bimini frame. Most of the hardware and components that are required to build a four bow bimini frame are included in the bimini frame kits. There are some tools that you may need or may already have on hand. A list of those tools is included here. Then we have the list for building the wooden platform if you choose to build it as we did in this video. If you'd like to make modifications to what is included in the Bimini frame kit or even a skin kit, give us a call. We're glad to help. To watch the second video, which includes patterning and also how to build the four bow Bimini top, click the link at the top right. These are some of the previews from that video. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayright website or subscribe to the Sayright YouTube channel. Here are some related videos that may be of interest to you regarding Bimini tops. It is your loyal patronage to Sayright that makes these free videos available. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayright, thanks for watching.